Hi, this is Astrid, and welcome back to the channel. So today is Experimental Sunday. I'm in the lab messing around like usual. And honestly, guys, I really do on Sundays make it my day to just sit down, try to learn something new. And sometimes I'm not even like playing anything. I'll sit down and watch a Groove 3 video on how to do something and then learn something new with that. Or I'll just sit here and I'll tinker around with the uh, um, some of the gear that I have and see if I can learn something new with it. Um, but whatever the case is, I'm always trying to learn something new. So lately, uh, I think I've mentioned this on Friday, but I'm uh, learning to play guitar, um, actually taking lessons, um, not doing it blindly. Um, Sometimes I just feel like I have to have a guide to guide me, especially if it's something I've never done, be if I've never done it before. Um, and it's very helpful to be able to uh, have somebody to kind of steer you in the right directions um, so that you're not getting off course and, and doing stuff that's not going to be beneficial to you. Um, so I have been, again, still just doing a lot of chords and learning how to form the chords with my fingers, uh, specifically my left hand. So <clears throat> while I'm not perfect at it and I'm not great at it, um, I'm still learning. It's very painful because when you first start, your fingers don't have that calloused area. So when you're pressing down on the strings, it really, really is very painful. I took a couple of days off um, to allow my fingers to like heal, but I, they still feel very numb, like the fingertips are like really numb. And I think after, <clears throat> after quite some time, I'm hopefully, 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 hoping, <laughs> God, I can't talk today. I'm hoping that, um, I will have the feeling of my fingers back. <laughs> Otherwise this is the pits. Uh, to be walking around and feeling like your fingers are like missing or something <laughs> fingertips are missing <clears throat> um, Anyway, um, so I've been also uh, making sure to keep up on my piano practice as well so that I'm not getting um, out of touch with that um, And it's working out. Um, I can't complain too much. Uh, I definitely feel like I'm starting to delve more into harmonies um, maybe not all of the harmonies that I want um, but I'm getting there I don't force things with myself um, because when I try to do that it never works out well um, I take my time and I'll focus on one topic and when I feel like I've at least gotten decent at it and I'll move on to the next one um, anyway that's that's just my my process so from there I've uh, started working on this track today um, and I, I again it is more chord based so I started out playing chords and let me just cut off all this stuff I'll just show you what I've been doing So also, I'm, I'm, I am still learning how to record the guitar and how to process the, the sound. So it's like a work in progress all the way around with this whole new thing. Um, I, I was using <clears throat> a microphone in front of the amp, but what I found is that I could hear, still hear my neighbors, um, a lot of outside noise doing it that way. So. My amp has um, actually a really cool connections on the back where you can plug in um, using a, like an XLR cable. So I'm running it from there uh, to my DAW or actually into uh, my interface. And I was able to like pull a channel from, from my DAW or from my interface. Good grief. 
man, my, I'm just like totally just out of socket today. <clears throat> and I feel like I'm getting a cold. Um, so I apologize for all of the, the throat sounds. <laughs> um, from there, I was able to bring it in, but uh, I didn't like the way that it sounded. It sounded a little thin. So I added a Fab Filter Pro Q compressor and it sounds like that now. And then from there, I said, okay, maybe I don't like the rhythm or the pattern that I'm playing. So then I started screwing around with the Shaper Box 2. And the Shaper Box 2 is awesome. It has these stepped sequences that you can use or you can create your own. Um, and it's, it, I mean, it's, Shaper Box 1 was very similar, but it seems like they've changed some of the algorithms in this one. It's very cool. So I added that in. Okay, so from there I said, okay, hmm, I need something else. So I pulled out the handy Guitar Rig 5 and I am loving the Guitar Rig 5. You know, I never used it before up until I started messing with these guitars. Um, and this thing is just a wealth of like sound, tone sounds. So guitarists think of their sound as tones. Um, and that's another thing is learning all of the guitar lingo um, is kind of funny to me. Um, so it, adding any sound to the guitar um, increases its tone value, <laughs> which is kind of funny to me. But guitarists can be just as uh, <clears throat> inventive as we can be with our sounds with other sounds as in our DAWs. So um, that's why you get a chance to hear all of the different types of sounds um, that the guitar can make. Um, most of those sounds are due to uh, some sort of special effect or um, like a stomp pedal effect or... Um, some processed effect that they've added to the guitar to make it sound that way. Um, so I'm learning a lot about that and spending more time understanding how to alter the sound. Um, so I added that to this sound and this is what I've had now. So the chords are a little bit lengthier than they were, and it's definitely processed. So uh, from there, I added a um, rhythm section. It's an 808, a hot, some hi-hats, and a kick and a snare. And then I found this quirky sounding melody, which is a piano sound. And it's from, or I'm sorry, and then I used the portal to jazz it up some more. And I'm using a patch called Wobble Glitch. And I moved my grains over in the upper corner and I have this thing halfway. Um, so this is what this sounds like. And okay, from there, of course I have like a vocal snip in there, but I'll save that for the end video. Um, it, it doesn't have any really special processing. My normal stuff, I'm in love with Mr. Shep's Omni-Channel Mono. <laughs> it is the bomb. I'm learning more and more how to use this thing. Um, messing with compression. Compression on vocals is very interesting. Um, it can change the tonality of the vocal. Um, and also saturation, um, which is, it's very, very... Um, it's from a sound perspective, it's it, you almost have to have an, a spectral analysis meter to be able to see the changes that it makes from a from a uh, being able to hear it uh, perspective. But the when you change it, um, it does change it in a in a very interesting way. Um, and that's the other thing. Uh, when I was uh, talking on Friday, 
Um, there are some things that I have been researching that I need to work on. So for one thing, let me just kind of show you my master chain real quick. Um, so I used this tool uh, for normalization. Um, it's by uh, Neugen. It's called the Master Check. Master Check allows you to be able to check the overall volume of your uh, track against what the normal rates would be for like like the stream. Excuse me, like the streaming services. So I have a something to go by um, to be able to determine if it's going to be too loud or not loud enough, or if it's at a specific volume when uh, you hear it on, say, Spotify, Apple Music, Deezer, whatever, um, it gets bumped up in volume. Well, the, mis the mistakes that I made um, were to try to m match the, the given value, um, which is already a very loud uh, volume level. Um, instead of matching it, I just needed to like come to a specific level like midway. So maybe 10 luffs instead of uh, 14 luffs like it's showing for this. And that would have gotten me where I needed to be. So again, I'm learning a lot of stuff. Um, I've got another plugin that I'm looking at by Neugen. It's a spectral analysis tool. It allows you to be able to see um, all of the spectrum from um, lower bass all the way into the mids and into the highs, but not just one way. Um, it allows you to see it in multiple ways so that you can really get a, a feel for how, what's happening with your sound. Um, one of the things I really like about that tool is it shows you the speakers, um, the volume on the left, or it shows you a, 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 an image of the left speaker and the right speaker, like right on top of each other. And you can kind of see uh, from a stereo spectrum analysis perspective what's happening. So I think I'm researching that one to see if that's going to be beneficial to me. Um, but from what I've been reading so far, I think maybe that might be a really good one for me for my mastering um, so that I can get better with uh, um, volume and overall sound perspective. Um, and I, I love the Fab Filter Pro Q3 because it allows me to be able to, to see things in that spectral way. But um, only from an EQ standpoint, it, it does show you like the overall spectrum but it's it doesn't well i'll just kind of show you what it does so this allows you to be able to change your levels You can also um, reduce some of those peaks. So again, I'm, I'm learning this tool as well, how to, how to be more effective with it and being able to really tune things. So, I mean, there's just so much to learn that it's just not enough time to learn everything. Um, I, I use... Um, the, the UAD uh, Fairchild 7, 670 as my limiter all the time um, in my master chain. I like the way it sounds. It's a very analog sound, um, and it just, I, don't, I like the way it sounds. That's the only reason why I keep it in there. Um, and I have for volume, overall volume, um, to bring it up, uh, is the Waves L, L3 Ultra Maximizer, and I've been using this forever. Um, my problem with this is that I need to be more sparing with the levels that I'm using. So if I can get it maybe not as loud as I've pushed it up, um, it'll be a lot better. And then I always have in my chain as well the S1 uh, imager or stereo imager. And this is a Waves plugin too. I'm a, actually a, a big Waves plugin uh, kind of girl. 
I've been using Waves plugins for a really long time. Um, there are some things it's just got to have and got to got to be able to use. Um, I would prefer to go with all UAD plugins, but God, those things are just expensive. I, I got a lot of the plugins that I have um, with my Apollo 8. And the reason why I got the Apollo 8 is because I needed the inputs. Um, I used to have a Digi02 and it had a bunch of inputs on it. Um, so when I had to upgrade, I had to find something that was comparable. Um, I couldn't just buy like a little small little interface and expect to get away with it. Um, I had to have something that had a bunch of inputs on it to be able to support all of the gear that I have. Um, I don't have as much gear as I used to have, but I can't say that that's not true um, because I added a lot more keyboard modules. I don't have like physical keyboards because I don't have the space for them. Um, so I end up getting some modules. I have a, um, the um, Dave Smith um, uh, Prophet 12 and have... Um, an access virus, which I always wanted the, one of those things. Um, the access virus is like the sound of the 90s and the 2000s. Um, it's like a very, very, very popular keyboard uh, module from with all of those sounds that you used to hear from back in the day. Um, it's kind of up there with the Korg M1. Um, the Korg M1 was a very popular keyboard from, from that time, time frame. It's because of the types of sounds that it had in it. Um, I used to have a Korg Triton, um, but I no longer use a Korg Triton. Um, most of the sounds from the Korg Triton I can actually get away with using other types of uh, gear or other types of uh, software plugins for it. Um, but the, the ones that I do have, those are just not, you know, there's just just gotta have them because <laughs> they, they make a specific type of sound and you can't emulate that with software um, but yep that's what I've been doing and that's what I do on Sundays uh, continue to learn and moving forward if you guys have any questions uh, please drop that into drop it in the uh, comment section I'm more than happy to help you um, or answer any questions and I'm gonna start doing some different things on the channel, uh, get back to making my uh, stop animation uh, flicks and maybe some more animated stuff as well. Um, I miss kind of doing that stuff. Uh, it's just something I really like doing. Um, it, it's just something I like to do. <laughs> um, so that's what I have for this Sunday. And I'll see you next Sunday. I'm out. She hooked on me, pulling out it throw the book on me. Oh Lord, oh Lord, I did my time, they got me shake on me. Who am I? You know she hooked on me, pulling out it throw the book on me. Oh Lord, oh Lord, I did my time, they got me shake on me.